Well, I'm very pleased to introduce Jan Lutner, the founder and CEO of Innovatrix, the conference partner. Jan's the author of the fastest fingerprint algorithm in the world. And today he'll be outlining how we can best harness this technology for everyday interactions. Please welcome Jan Lutner. Hello, hello everyone. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad I'm glad to have that I have this opportunity to talk to you. So my name is Jan Hunter. I'm the CEO of Innovatrix. Innovatrix is a biometric company providing biometric technology and uh, biometric solutions to other companies. I'm sure you all agree we live in exciting uh, times, and uh, I think there is some kind of revolution that is happening right now. Our society is changing. The very nature of human interactions is uh, changing. We go through a radical change. Before we, it was more eye to eye. Today, it becomes more webcam to webcam. Uh, before, we really enjoyed talking in person. Now it's not possible so often. So, the, and the world becomes different. We are moving from physical world into digital world. The physical world is shrinking and the digital world is becoming, is growing, is becoming bigger and bigger. The point is this change will be permanent. This will stay with us. Uh, it's, a, it's a new norm. This is not just a temporary, but we will stay, it will stay with us. Why am I saying that? Let's have a look at what happens in Germany. And in 2020, 75% uh, of uh, new bank accounts have been opened digitally, remotely, without the need to go and visit the uh, local branch office. And it's not that the banks were closed. The banks were pretty much open during the whole year. And the summer, the pandemic uh, was, uh, was not there or was quite soft. Now let's have a look at, at the Americans. So in uh, 2020, 84 million of Americans have signed up uh, for new online services, for services that, used, that they used before in person, but now they use them uh, digitally. When they were asked if they want to continue and use this new way of access, exceeding those services, 75% of them responded, yes, uh, we like this. We will either go fully digital or we will use digital and in-person services uh, like combination. Uh, so this really shows uh, uh, we like the change and we like the new normal. We like the way things are right now. I think this would not be possible 10 years ago or even five year, years ago. This change would not happen. There would be many issues. I see three main reasons for this. We have now fast internet and reliable internet that was not here. Smartphones, everybody has a smartphone. It's not uh, uh, everybody can use smartphone. Uh, it's very common before it was not. And smartphones are very closely linked to biometrics. Uh, every smartphone is uh, a fingerprint uh, scanner or most of the smartphones are also fingerprint scanners. All smartphones are facial biometric scanners. They have web, they have cameras, so they bring biometrics within your reach. The question is why we need biometrics? Why biometrics? What is it good for? So let's talk. Let's uh, let's see one example, and that's something that we are we are doing that we create technology for. Imagine you want to open, as 75% of Germans, you want to open uh, remotely a new uh, bank account. And the way how you do it, you log into your phone, you take a picture of your ID card, and you can then uh, remotely, digitally open your new, brand new bank account. However, there are many problems on the way, and this is what biometrics is good for. First, how can bank trust you? How can bank be sure you are who you claim to be? How can bank establish your identity? And that's what biometrics is good for because it can recognize and compare your picture on the ID card with, with your mm, selfie. 
So this is good. But what happens if you have a fake ID? So, okay, we need some other level of tech, new tech, other technologies that will check your ID, whether it's genuine or if, whether it's a spoof. But then the situation can be even more complicated and maybe have a look, please have a look at the picture in the middle. It looks like a smiling lady uh, in good mood. And, but okay, now I will maybe surprise you. Uh, that person is not the real person. That person not, does not exist. That person will not exist. This, that person has never existed. It's uh, an artificially created person, uh, dreamed, dreamed by a neural network, created by a neural network, but it looks very realistic. So today you are not even sure whether there is a human in the loop. So this is a new challenge that was not uh, here before. And I think this also redefines the biometrics uh, and biometrics industry. We have been uh, in the world of biometrics. We, are, we have been there for now more than 15 years. And at the beginning, it was really recognizing people in the pictures, making sure this photo represents the same guy as that photo, making sure the, the fingerprint here is the same as the fingerprint here, or the palm print or the iris is always the same. And that was it. That was pretty much our job. Uh, now we have a new challenge. We have to detect and recognize human humanity. We have to be sure it's a human being at the end. It's not an artificial fake image or a spool, something digitally created, a virtual identity that does not exist. We have to be sure there is a human at the end of the chain. So the biometrics, the scope of biometrics has, uh, has broadened. How we do it? And uh, we are pretty lucky. There are new tools that help us how we do it. So before we were more focused on when we were developing algorithms. Today we are maybe a little bit more focused on uh, creating data sets. Uh, here we can see we are stimulating uh, those frost, fraudsters trying to open bank accounts remotely. So this is our lab in uh, Brno in Czech Republic. And we are taking uh, photos uh, of uh, either of, um, on, on a smartphone. So these are these are fake photos, and we have to distinguish. Our job is to distinguish whether it's a genuine person or it's just a photo displayed on a smartphone uh, display. Uh, what is good is there are new techniques that are helping us. Uh, what kind of techniques I am talking about, and you all know when you have heard, uh, and okay, this is buzzword artificial intelligence and deep neural networks. And when we were beginning, it was more about we called the same things were called image processing. Today it's a neural network, okay, uh, no problems there. Uh, but at the same time, we have to admit it's very powerful. And uh, we see a big, we see a big evolution, and we can call it a revolution in biometrics. We see a big progress in biometrics in general. So what you see here are our results benchmarked by National Institute of Standards and Technology in the U.S. And it shows the progress of our facial recognition algorithm, how it improved uh, in the period of two years. So. It's, in two years, we have been able to reduce the error rate 10 times, which is really a major improvement. And it's not only us, in, it's the industry in general. Uh, it became uh, much more reliable. And I think we, we, we can uh, now really very well establish uh, an identity of the person. So we are helping this digital transformation uh, to happen. Unfortunately, and the sad news, the war is not over and uh, we still have to continue the race and it's a race and it's an arms race and I think it's a never ending arms race it's, and that's why I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about permanent revolution. On this video you are seeing only two faces are genuine. Uh, those two American ex-presidents are genuine. All other images are just mimicking the behavior of, uh, of two role models. This was not possible. Such highly 
high quality fakes were not uh, available two years or five years ago. Uh, so it makes also our task of detecting those fakes more difficult. So we have to we have to keep up with with it. Uh, Okay, another example, uh, those fakes and deep fakes, and you have heard about deep fakes, they have become very cheap. And maybe you have recognized me a little bit transformed. Uh, so you, and okay, the cost of creating this video was very close to zero. Uh, it took only five minutes. So those deep fakes are becoming very cheap. So we are talking about cheap deep fakes and uh, we have to we have to recognize them and we have we have to establish the, genu the genuinity of them. How we will do it and uh, what we what we plan to do and what's the challenge for us? Uh, I think this is the role for biometrics uh, to find out and detect these uh, kind of uh, frauds. Uh, I think the biometrics has to be at the same time more present. Uh, and less visible, even seamless. What do I mean? You imagine a smartphone. A smartphone has a lot of sensors. It can use hard biometrics. It can detect your face. It can check your facial image. It can check your fingerprint. Okay, that that we know. But it can also use some kind of soft biometrics. It can uh, measure the angle you are holding your smartphone. It can measure the pressure you are applying or the speed of your movement. So, and this can happen all the time behind the scenes permanently. And that's, that's what I mean by seamless biometrics happening all the time. So I think this, this can be a solution. So many people think we are doomed. Many people think, okay, deep fakes, they are so great, so perfect. It won't be possible anymore to distinguish uh, the fake from the true, from the genuine. I don't think so. I think biometrics will help us, biometrics will be our compass, and biometrics will tell us what is real, what is genuine, and what we can trust. Thank you, Jan, for a titanic presentation. Uh, great to have you with us, and looking forward to you joining uh, the panel later on.